Hi, my name's Tim Smith. I'm the AVP of IT Audit at LPL Financial. It's a wholly owned subsidiary of LPL Financial Holdings. Uh, we're the nation's largest independent broker dealer. Um, and what that means is we basically don't have a financial product per se to sell. As AVP of IT Audit, um, I manage a team of five people and we do a variety of audits. First, we do IT specific audits, which is what I was hired for. Um, getting down into the details of the information technology systems that we have and they number upwards of 200. Um, I also do a lot of support for both the financial and operations side, which is more like SOX auditors, if you will, on the one hand. But also, being a broker-dealer, we have a very large compliance side, which relates to rules and regulations from FINRA and the Securities and Exchange Commission that govern broker-dealers. And oftentimes, there's a lot of information systems supporting those rules and regulations that we need to audit and understand. Back in about 2001, um, GAO came to KPMG because they were going to do some work on educational loans uh, on behalf of the U.S. Department of Education. And I had just finished work at another client where I used IDEA and uh, had some available time and so I was selected to do the work. And what it involved was first of all training five GAO auditors on how to use IDEA and do data analytics and to try to work on this problem they were seeing of loans perhaps that were being um, improperly granted, if you will, to, to people who were maybe not necessarily students or the, whose name was used that was not students. So what we did is um, we were going out to the various loan servicers uh, for the Department of Education. What we ended up finding out is that um, there were quite a number of records uh, that fell into two categories. One, it was for uh, people using social security numbers, people who'd long since died, because we used the social security um, deceased person's database, if you will, and did joins against the educational records on social security number. And then we also looked at somewhat fuzzy logic in the address fields. And we started finding that people were, who were co-signing the loans, if you were, were kind of geographically concentrated in various parts of the country for places where they'd have no reason to know the actual student involved. So at the end of the day, it came out that uh, we got about 12 or $13 million returned to the treasury. I use IDEA because in a lot of ways, there's a level of abstraction that IDEA provides you. In other words, you don't need to think of some of the system issues going on. Um, you don't have to think about how you would do a join in SQL or how you would do a summarization in Excel and how you would then get rid of the blank lines and all that good stuff. So it gives you the freedom, if you will, to think about what you want to do, not how you need to do it. And that's a very, that's a big differentiator. At the same time, it's a great staff trainer because at the end of the day, the history file tells what you did, both the good and the bad, granted, because the mistakes are in there as well. But nonetheless, it's, it's a way to teach folks, right? And I think the, also the most important reason is one of the first times I used IDEA and people said, well, why aren't you using um, Excel or Access? I'm like, when you've got 200,000 lines, you, if you by accident hit the wrong key, which of those 200,000 lines did I change by accident? So the concept of being able to have a file that's in its original version and at the same time be able to manipulate it by way of field manipulation um, is just, you can't beat it in any other tool. Another thing that was helpful was thinking about the idea of files that are in transit between systems. I had a client where they were doing their sales in Siebel on the one hand, you know, order entry, put it in Siebel, the file then would dump overnight into a file server and then the next day get picked up by General Ledger. The sales manager at this particular firm also knew that and he also had access to that file. So what he was doing at nighttime was going in and changing the dates on some of those records so that he was getting cash awards for improving his apparently approving his receivables flow, okay? So what I did is I used the concept of IT security, meaning that the file in transit between systems 
was not protected. And so that's the first place I went to look. And I did joins on the sales order number, for example, and I had different dates on either side of the systems. Boom. Every place I go, I, I recommend IDE, the idea even to um, shops that use the competition. Um, and I really use it, I explain it to them the same way I've explained it here. It's so intuitive and at the end of the day, if you, if you have the tool but it's not used, it's, it's a complete loss of benefit, right? So if you have this tool that's on one hand powerful but on the other hand is so intuitive and allows you to just use your imagination, it's, it's absolutely a win-win and so everywhere I go and for example, I have brought um, idea as a concept over to my current employer, LPL. I would definitely recommend idea to people both in the accounting space as well as the IT space um, in the sense that it's so intuitive but yet so powerful.